Welcome back to the Warframe Beginner's Guide. I want to show you guys what I got in a defense mission that I was doing for the Night Wave. Do 20 waves of defense. Because uh, then I'm going to show you what we've done with Volt since then. Because we got really, really lucky on that one. So this is actually the reward screen or a screenshot of the reward screen from that 20 round defense mission. This was just on Earth. I'll actually point the note out to you in just a moment. And we got both Continuity and Flow, as well as Iron Phoenix, which is a melee... It's a sword weapon stance, which I don't even have on my main account, so that's kind of cool. Uh, anyways, the reason I'm showing you guys this is because both Continuity and Flow are some of those core mods that you're going to use on most of your frames. And it's crazy that we were able to get both in just that one Defense 20 run on Earth. Uh, so I've gone ahead and incorporated those into our Volt build. Volt, by the way, is ranked up to 30 now. You see this little symbol right here? That means that he is mastered, which means we cannot rank him any further. Now that he's kind of capped out, we are going to go ahead and put a reactor on him. I could have done this before to double his mod capacity, but I honestly didn't think about it. And that's mainly because Orican reactors are rare enough in the game that I usually wait until a frame is capped out and I'm sure that I want to use them in future content before I go ahead and put a reactor on them. In this case, I know that I'm going to be using Volt for a lot of content. So we're going to put that reactor on and you can see that doubles our mod capacity here. Now once again, I'm still not going to max out these core mods except for the ones that I have doubles of. And that's mainly because we want to be able to use these on new frames that we're leveling up. We still need a non-flawed streamline, by the way. But everything else that's core, we've kind of we've kind of obtained already. We have stretch, we have flow, we have redirection, we have steel fiber, we have vitality, continuity, and intensify. That is like the core mod kit for a frame without any specialization. Because each frame is, you know, good at something different, and you definitely want to play to their strengths, but this is the core mod kit that you can put on any frame and have it perform okay. So we've got everything but the streamline now, which is awesome. And I'm not sure where we'll pick that streamline up. That might be a little bit further down the star map, or maybe we'll just get lucky in another defense mission. I don't know. Uh, the crazy thing about that was I believe that it was the flow that just dropped. I think the flow just dropped off an enemy and the continuity we actually got as a reward from the mission. Uh, so, moving forward, we do know Volt is capped out now. We're not using the bow, the Mark I Paris anymore, because that's also capped out. See the mastery rank symbol there? Um, and we are almost done capping out the Leto. Now, the bow, the Mark I Paris, is not used as an ingredient for anything, so I'm actually going to go ahead and sell this right now. I'm not going to need to hold on to it for very long. You'll also notice that we have a mastery rank up to do. This is going to be a very busy episode, guys, but I'm really excited because we're going to be showing you some cool, cool things today. Or I'm going to be showing you some cool, cool things today. So first of all, we're going to go into our armory and we're going to... Actually, you know what? We'll wait. We won't sell the bow until we need to. We can wait just a moment because sometimes you'll get a mission where it'll be like, bring a bow. You can only use bows on this. So we'll hold on to it for a sec. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to navigation here, and first I'm going to show you the defense mission that I ran that I got all that stuff in, which was this one right here. It was Lith. I just ran 20 waves on Lith. That's where we got flow and continuity. So if you're looking to just grind out some affinity or something, this is actually what I recommend as a new player. Even more than those Dark Sector missions, they're both good, but this one had that chance to get those very core mods. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to check out the Strata Relay. Now, relays are kind of like uh, a hub of sorts for Tenno in the galaxy. So we're going to go to the Strata Relay. That's the one that I tend to use as like my home base. And I'm going to show you around the relay because we're going to do our Mastery Rank 3 test. Then we're going to talk about syndicates. And then after we do all of those things, we're going to talk about a sort of weekly quest slash mission you can do that is actually part of the current Night Wave. Uh, while we're at it, when we land, I want to take a look at Night Wave. Also, you see that little that little thing on my neck right there? That's a thing. It happens in game. See how it's got that little tentacle thing growing out of it? If you get one of those, don't worry about it. I know it's kind of nasty looking. You want to hold on to that for the moment, but later on, there is a way to remove that so it doesn't keep making your frame look nasty. Uh, we should stop for a moment, take a look at Nightwave, see what I'm up to. I did reach three yesterday, and if we look at what's left, we have Help Clem with his weekly mission. That's what we're going to be doing today. We have unlocked three relics. I believe those become available at Master Rank 3, but I'm not 100% sure, so we'll see. Um, and then Orb Valis is something I'd like to get us into today as well. And we won't be able to do the sortie one. Sorties are sort of endgame activities. Not endgame, they're more like mid to endgame activities. I would say that the Kuva stuff is more endgame. Anyways, so this is the Strata Relay. If we open up our map, we can see there's all these various blue symbols. 
Now, what those blue symbols are is those are different, <clears throat> excuse me, different syndicates, which we do not have access to yet. So we're going to go to this elevator right here. We're going to descend. Now, when we do, we're going to land at the bottom here. And there are a couple of things down here worth note. Most importantly is this little symbol right here. See that thing right there? That is the Cephalon Samara symbol. We're going to come in here. And if we go to the right here, you'll see these things right here. These are mastery rank boots. So we're on number three. So if we step in here, it'll say mastery rank test three. If I hit X, we have the option to practice or qualify. The reason this is important is because you only get to attempt a mastery rank test once per day. So if you fail it, you have to wait until the next day, which isn't a big deal, but it can slow down your progress. I'm not going to practice the MR3 because I'm pretty sure we got this. I'll just go ahead and do qualify here, but you should practice. It'll probably make things a little bit less stressful on you if you're not 100% sure of yourself. Let's go. I'm 100% I'm sure of myself until we hit the Mastery Rank 9 test, which is a stealth test, in which case I will probably struggle a little bit. All right. Oh, this is a melee weapon test. Okay. We got this. Where are you guys at? Oh, I maybe should have brought a different weapon into this. Maybe, maybe. You'll note that we don't have access to our abilities once again because this is specifically a test of our melee capabilities. Okay. I really wish I'd have brought something other than the, the Mark 1 bow here. It's not our best weapon. It does have a little bit of heat damage on it, though, which is working just fine for what we're doing. Of course, they give us corpus enemies, which have shields. We're going to pop them up. Shred them up. There we go. Wave 2 completed. All right. One more wave. Let's go. Oh, come on, where's my ground finishers at? Oh, we have plenty of time. I'm, like, worrying mainly because of the time, but we have plenty of time. The bow is just a little bit slower than the Skana. There we go. That should be it. Right? Yeah. Beautiful. Okay, MR3 is complete. When we get to some of the missions on this episode, I may actually cut those out and just kind of keep progressing onto the content. Uh, all right. Massive, massive increase there. We did get Syndicate access. We got some more Void Trace storage. I don't know if we actually unlocked access to Relics yet. I don't think we did. That may be a higher mastery rank, or it may actually be locked behind a quest. I'm not 100% sure. <laughs> that being said, uh, we, we have plenty of stuff to do if we don't get to do Relics today, so that's okay. So here we are back at the relay. It did spawn us back in at the entrance. If at any point you'd like to move somewhere quicker, though, you can just hit escape and go to fast travel. So what we're going to do here is we're going to go to fast travel and we're going to jump down to... Hmm. No, let's do this first. Let's do this first for a logical reason. We're going to run over and grab our syndicates. Now, before we do this, I am going to tell you which syndicates I recommend, but more importantly, how I recommend to level them. Because depending on the way that you level your syndicates, you can gain access to two of them very, very easily and rank them up. Or you can gain access to four of them very, very easily. Obviously, getting access to four syndicates out of the six instead of two out of the six gives you more options and more flexibility. So we're going to stop for a moment here and take a look at this. This is directly off of the wiki. I'm going to explain a little bit what you're seeing here. So basically what this shows is which syndicate you can support to get which resulting values and there's an efficiency percentage on the right. So this is sort of all sorts of different options. There's ones that go even less efficient than this, but for our purposes, the only thing we are actually interested in here is these highest efficiency percentages. So just these top two. Now, we want to go with Steel Meridian as your first syndicate because Steel Meridian has a mod for the heck called uh, Scattering Justice. I I want to say it's Scattering Justice. Anyways, we'll head on over there and we'll talk to them and I'll show you what we're looking at. And in order to get their rep up very quickly, you're going to want to make them one of your primaries. So if we look at the maximum efficiency options that I've got up on the screen right now, we can see Steel Meridian 66.6% and Cephalon Suda 33.3%. And if you look next to that, you can see that you'll gain a lot of rep with the Steel Meridian. You'll gain a little bit of rep with the Arbiters of Hexes. That's what that sword symbol is. You'll gain a medium amount of rep with Cephalon Suda, and then you'll gain a little bit of rep with Red Veil, which is what that little feather thing is on the side. So that is our ideal thing. We're going to gain rep with all four of those. Primarily, though, with Steel Meridian. This is Arbiters of Hexes. <laughs> 
Um, and the reason we're doing that is because Steel Meridian has that Scattering Justice mod, which is going to make your travels through the galaxy much, much easier. So here is Steel Meridian right here. We're going to come have a little chit-chat with them. So, All right, we would like to initiation here. So it is going to cost us some salvage and some credits. That's okay. That's going to take us up to neutral rank zero with them, and it gives us access to the Steel Meridian sigil. When we wear that sigil, we will gain reputation with Steel Meridian. All right, so we are not going to be able to go to rank one until we get 5,000 rep with them, which is fine. You can see at the bottom right there, there was a thing that said daily standing 3,000. That is our current standing cap per day. We are allowed to get 3,000 rep to all syndicates per day. So let's go ahead and check this one out. This is Cephalon. That's something different. This is Cephalon Suda. This will be your secondary that you're grabbing. So we're going to go ahead and do initiation here as well. She's going to ask for some circuits and some credits. Going to go ahead and pick those up. Now, these syndicates are very thematic. There is a story behind each one of them. And if you actually spend the time and listen to what they say, you can really get into that. I'm not going to be doing that a whole lot on this particular episode. And that's mainly because we're trying to show you the most efficient way to go through syndicates as a new player right now. Oh, we lack nanospores for the Arbiters. That's okay. That's okay. We can still, I believe, gain rep with them. We just won't get their sig or their sigil, which is totally fine. We don't need their sigil right now, but once we get some nanospores, we'll want to come back and rank up with them just so that we can gain access to their items. Uh, I note that I did not look at these Steel Meridian items, but that's okay. I can show you that stuff in a moment. Here's Red Veil. We'll talk to them and see if we can initiate with them. We can indeed. Lovely. Okay, so we now have the Red Veil sigil. We're not going to use that ever. Do not use the Red Veil Sigil if you want to keep ranking up all four of the Syndicates at once. Now that we've got our sort of aligned faction -y Syndicates done, we're going to go look at one more Syndicate here in the Relay that you should keep in mind, and that is Samaris. We've already been to his area, but we have not talked to him just yet. So let's go say hello to our friend Cephalon Samaris. This is Samaris. He's a big glowy light thing. He's also kind of a jerk. Uh, what is this place? I am Cephalon Samaris, the destroyer, the immortalized. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is my sanctuary. It will enlighten you, Tano, should you assist me in performing services. Lovely. You will hunt the creatures I require and okay. transform them into beings of the sanctuary. That is synthesis. Okay. Is this murder? No. <laughs> All beings of substance die eventually. But only those forgotten are truly dead. The okay. The Aura can wipe out untold knowledge. Through synthesis, we can rebuild and preserve, create memory immortals within this data oasis. All right. Will you become enlightened, Tenno? Will you hunt for me? Yes, I will. Ah, I see we are nice. So we got the Sanctuary Initiation the Kit. Sanctuary will be your project, too. Okay. So the reason we get that is because this allows us... Because <laughs> this allows us to then talk to Samaris and ask him, do you have any targets? He wants us to find the Shield Lancer guy. We can scan him in missions. Okay. When we're in mission, we'll go over this. The main reason we're grabbing this, though, is because this is another faction that you can gain rep with. And when you do, you will be able to spend that rep over here at Offerings to buy different things. You can also buy synthesis scanners and kinetic traps here. Kinetic traps will actually stop an enemy so that you can scan it. And the synthesis scanner is used to actually scan it. Cephalon Samaris' sigil here is purely cosmetic. It will not give you reputation with this syndicate. So basically don't waste your, your affinity on that. Uh, what you could waste it on, though, and rather not waste it, but spend it on, the first one you'll want to get right here is this Soul Battery Widget, which recharges your your Synthesis Scanners for free. That's a very important one to get as soon as we get 50,000 rep with Samaris. It's going to be a little while before we hit that point, uh, but it is something that we'll want to get. There's also a bunch of other goodies in here, things that you can pick up and use, things that you can actually sell. For example, this energy conversion mod right here actually sells for a lot of platinum. It does cost 100,000 rep with Samaris, though, so it's going to be a hot minute before you can pick that up to sell it for plat. Uh, and that is one of the primary functions of your syndicates as well, is selling them for plat. I'm not sure if now that we've sort of explored around we can get there faster. No, we can't. 
All right, so what we're gonna do real quick, because I didn't take a look at it, is we're gonna run back up and we're gonna take a look at Steel Meridian's offerings so I can show you that one particular mod that we are deeply interested in and why it's so important to a new player. Um, hello, hello. Steel Meridian friend, where you at? Okay, so if we talk to our Steel Meridian friend, we can view offerings here. So the first rank will give us access to everything that's under Brave right here, so just these additional sigils, no big deal. The second rank, Valiant, will give us access to some parts for, I believe, arc weapons, uh, as well as the Relic Pack, which is going to be nice when we get to Relics, and just some more sigils. You see how these sigils say plus 8%, plus 5%? That's additional rep that you will build with that faction when you're wearing those, so we do want to get upgraded sigils as we rank up, and I'll show you that as we go through the game. Um, and then once we hit the rank of Protector, we get access to this right here. Scattered Justice, plus 200% multi-shot. What multi-shot is, is it's a percentage chance that you will fire basically an extra shell or two every time you fire your weapon. So with this, you essentially fire the heck three times every time you fire it, and the heck is a shotgun with four barrels that fires a lot of a lot of shells, basically. So when you then multiply those shells by three, you have a weapon that will basically carry you through most of the content in the game on its own. So this is a very important mod to get as a new player. That being said, we can do that while gaining rep with all those other factions. Now what I do want to talk about, because it's still up on screen, is what that 66.6% and that 33.3% mean. Those things mean that we want to make sure that we are wearing the Steel Meridian Sigil for basically two-thirds of our rep per day, so about 2,000 rep, and when you have about 1,000 left, you want to switch over to your Cephalon Suda Sigil. Now, we should be able to access our equipment here, so I'll show you how to do that. We're going to hop in, we're going to go to Appearance on Volt, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep our A Appearance right here as a set that has the Sigil for Steel Meridian. Now, you can move this around, you can recolor it, all those things. I'm just going to leave it right there for right now because that's a little more effort than, and time than we want to put into it. Then I'm going to go to my B rank here, and I'm going to go ahead and apply the Sigil for Cephalon Suda. Now, once again, I could do all the coloring and styling for this, this different outfit or whatever, but this makes it very easily, easy for me to go, okay, I've gained 2,000 rep, time to switch to B. Okay, it's a new day, time to switch to A. Um, and doing that is going to allow you to keep that balance of reputation with your syndicates going very, very easily. Now we're going to come down to the bottom here because we have one more task here in the relay, and that is to begin the missions for Clem, the weekly quest that we were asked to do for Nightwave. This is Darvo. He was the guy that helped us in the intro quest. What kind of job? Okay. A man of few words. Darvo needs your help again. Save one of his best contractors from Grenier Execution. Uh, we will get an Exilus Warframe adapter from this. I'm not going to explain what that is because you won't need it for a very, very long time. We're just going to go ahead and accept this quest. And then if we talk to Darvo again, he should actually send us on the mission. No, he will not. Okay, normally when you start this quest every week, you'll start it from Darvo. You'll actually talk to him and he will send you off on the mission. In this instance, that's not going to happen. Instead, we're going to go back to our orbiter, and we should be able to look under our missions category in our navigation and find the quest. A man of few words. There we go. Set that as our active quest. Yes, please. And now when we click on it, it is going to send us to the mission. You Oh, okay. I guess we're not going to do that because we do require the arc wing first. Uh, the arc wing is something we should have the quest for now. But we have not done yet, or do we not? We need to do the Mars Junction before we get the quest for that. Alright, so that means we're not going to be doing that this episode. <laughs> There's a lot of interconnected requirements for stuff, so if you run into a wall with something, you can just focus on working on, for example, in this case, we could go for the Mars Junction. Instead, what we're going to do here is we're going to work on this Orvalis thing now, and we have plenty of time to start that off. Let's go for that. So we're going to bounce back, and we're going to go to Venus here and land on Fortuna. Uh, there is a cool, cool cutscene here, and I'm also going to take the... Where is it? The Syndicates thing off. Um, I'm just going to be quiet during this. In fact, I'm even going to turn off my webcam, because this is such a cool thing. I hope you guys enjoy this. I know I did.
coming. Feel the weight of what we owe. This, the song of sons and daughters, hide the heart of who we are. Making peace to build a future, strong, united, working till we call the air and water flowing. Folks, welcome to Fortuna. These are the Vox Solaris. They are basically debt interned, uh, indentured servants of the Corpus, which is, as we've talked about, a cult that worships money. So they've had body parts replaced by machinery parts so that they can work more effectively. Now, the way that this works is it's a little bit of that old company store type of thing where you get a body part replaced so you can work more efficiently to pay off your debt, but you incur a debt by getting that body part replaced, and you basically end up here forever. That's the way the Corpus have designed it. That's the way it is. So we need to go talk to Utico here to begin the Vox Solaris quest. Now the reason we're doing this is not specifically to unlock access to this zone. There is a transportation tool we're going to gain from doing this that we'll be using in another zone that is similar to this one as far as having a story. But there is nothing else in the game that is quite like Vox Solaris. I love this area. Busy. Oh, an outworlder. A teller. Yes, I am. Corpus operation we are, but these people are Solaris. Exactly. We don't need no trouble, and we don't need no one getting hurt. I love their accents, too. Go buy something from Thursby. He's been staring down the barrel of a repo order ever since he took on his parents' debt. Okay. What's a repo order? Ugly thing, repossession. A Solaris falls too deep in debt, and Neff sends in his repo squads to take what he says is owed. Uh-oh. You know, mechanical body parts, even a full rig. In Thursby's case, has he got none of that? They take the organics. Arms and legs. Wow. Yeah, there's a market for those too. Alrighty. So we're gonna go talk to Thursby now. You can see there's a whole bunch of Tenno congregating here. This is pretty common. Um, and there are quite a few vendors here and some unique interactions and characters that you can get to know. But for right now, we're gonna talk to Thursby and continue on with this quest. Just talk to your junkyard diplomat. I like Thursby. Utico sent me, bud. Utico sent you? A Tenno? To help meet me, Quota? Well, the. You know, you could buy some scrap, but. Alright. If you really wanted to help, you could source me some supplies. Some I can sell, not this garbage. Okay. Where the taxman keeps the good stuff. The taxman. That sort of thing, boss. Head top side. Alrighty. Um. So I think that's. With my parents. Well, boss, let's let's ask him about debt. I inherited their debt, and boy, were they owing deep. Can't work to pay it off, cause I ain't got no augmentations. I can't buy augmentations on account of all my debt. Vicious cycle, right? So, now I am. Selling useless scrap at the edge of a coolant canal. 
Yeah. He inherited his debt from his parents, which is why he can't actually get any augments, which would put him further into debt so that he can work on paying the debt that he inherited from his parents who passed away. This is a totally functional system. So this is the elevator right here. We're going to use this to act or er, to reach or Volus. <laughs> the magic of rebooted Oregon tech and the blood and the sweat of so many thousands of Solaris. That's a tragedy right there. What does Utica always say? Welcome to Venus. It'll kill you. <laughs> What's going on? You okay, so. This is Orvalis. It is the first big open world that we are encountering in the Beginner's Guide. There is another one called Cetus. Well, well, actually, it's called Plains of Eidolon, but the, the city is called Cetus. We'll be getting to that after this. The reason we came to this one first is because, as you can see, this map is massive. This is a huge open world. We will not be able to effectively get around until we acquire some transportation, which is what we're doing on this mission. Uh, you'll notice down here that there's a little timer thing that says warm in nine minutes. That means we're currently in a cold cycle. Orvalis has two different phases, warm and cold, and those phases will affect the types of fish that are available, the types of wildlife that you can basically go around preserving slash hunting. Interesting things like that. Uh, and that is something to keep in mind should you be trying to complete any sort of night waves out here, that certain things do change based on the warm and cold cycle. Now, as you can see, our first objective is a bit of distance away. Thankfully, we are Volt, so we can speed boost through here. But the map is massive, and without some form of transportation, it's going to take a while to get anywhere, which is, once again, why we're doing this first, because we really want to get that transportation. Alrighty. Transportation incoming. Uh, so this is the cache. Our first part of this is to find these caches. You'll notice that they do smoke slightly and they have green lights and are a yellow container. This is important to recognize because you're going to have to find two more of these and they can basically land anywhere inside of this yellow circle right here. So we're gonna be looking for those. Now, as we find them, that yellow circle should constrict and get a little bit smaller. Uh, let's see, any, any smoke clouds around that we are not noticing? Another nice trick is you can use these mushrooms to kind of hop up and get a higher vantage point to look from. Oh, there's one right there. Is there any others in our vision that we can find? Doesn't look like it. So we're going to go for that one next. Now, because I rolled there, I didn't take any damage or stagger when I hit the ground. That is going to be a very important skill. What the heck? I don't think I've ever seen that before. That was interesting. <laughs> It actually had a container in the container. Uh, so now that we've gotten that, the yellow circle may constrict, it may not, it just depends. Doesn't look like it's gonna constrict here. So we're gonna take these enemies out. Nice quick way to just get them out of our way. And then we can kind of speed boost here and just go looking around for our last cache. I'm gonna kind of run to the edges here and see if I can spot any smoke kind of around. If not, then we'll look to climb onto one of these mushrooms for a better vantage point again. This one's fine. Hello, cache. I see smoke. And if there's smoke, there's a cache. There we go. Gonna go ahead and crack that open. That one's got an object inside of it too. Maybe they've had objects in them the whole time and I've just never noticed because I just opened them for the objectives. Um, okay. So that has been completed. Oh boy. Yeah. Thursby is rabble rousing and Utico doesn't like it because it puts the Vox Solaris, or the Solaris rather, at uh, risk. Sorry, I keep saying Vox Solaris, that'll make more sense in the future. I have terrible aim. Thankfully, drones die in one electroshock, so we'll be taking advantage of that. And reload and stay fresh. We should be getting an icon on our screen telling us where to go next. There it is. 400 meters away. This will be really nice if we have a transportation method. Try to consider how much longer this would take if we were not sprinting right now with Volt. Like, this would be a considerably slower process if we did not have Volt's sprint, sprint boost and, you know, the ability to kind of do this to get between places. Ooh. Take that thermal sludge. 
Um, you can hit various different nodes that are shining around Orvalis, and you will get resources from it. There's also, like I said, gems to be mined. There are fish to be caught. There are animals to be captured and preserved or hunted. Your choice. Uh, you can get some cool stuffed animals for preserving them, though. There's people in Orvalis that you can turn in tokens from preserving them. Oh, and there's Rachni. Come here, you little... Rachni are little spider bots. Uh, they are kind of interesting. You can sometimes get a night wave to, like, kill them while you're in the air. And that's actually really convenient. Because you can kind of just jump glide and then hit them with an ability and it'll usually pop them pretty quickly. Uh, this is a problem. I want this Arctic Eximus guy to go. I want all of these guys to go. I'm just going to shock them real quick. And our actual target here is this drone. Now we're going to move in on the drone here. And it's probably just going to take a little bit of concentrated fire, actually. Oh yeah, that speeds it up a lot. That speeds it up an awful lot. Alrighty, drone is down. Might actually pick up our wall here. Beautiful. So now the drone has been hacked by Utico, and we need to defend it. You can see that it's got a shield and health bar up there. And in order to uh, succeed at this defense, we have to actually take out 30 enemies. So our goal is to watch this and make sure it does not get killed, but at the same time we also need to be taking out the enemies that are here to kill it. Now we are going to make judicious use of our shock here to help us keep the enemy numbers down, if at all possible, but most importantly, we need to figure out who is hitting the drone and take them out first. Alright, come on, who's next? want to take those other drones out with our electricity there to get them down very quickly. Where's our drone that we're defending? I've got to keep eyes on that thing because it can go down here very easily. No. Get off my drone. Get off it. Ugh. I wish we had brought the Skana instead of the bow here. Uh, this is another good point. If you're doing, like, important quests that will actually progress your storyline, Better to bring weapons that are leveled up and ready to go than it is to bring stuff you're leveling. Gonna have to use an auto-revive there to pick myself back up. Try to use that to buy us a little bit of time here. Once again, the most important thing is to keep this drone alive. And enemies like this are gonna be a problem. Because they can do a lot of damage in a very, very short amount of time. We did get his attention now, so that's a plus. And he's down. Beautiful. 14 more enemies to go. Oh, where's my aim at today? Nope. Get off. Uh, use your shock judiciously here to keep them from beating down on your drone. And always watch for when they hop like that, because a lot of times they will generate a shock wave that will knock you down. Nope, get off my drone. Off it. I am using Energy Siphon here. That is making this exceptionally easier because we do have a constant source of energy. If you do not have that, it may be a lot more difficult. Uh, nope. Don't forget, though, you can use your slam to take people off their feet and then finish them off with your guns. Uh, here we are starting to encounter a little bit of trouble. The enemies are starting to pile up a little bit, so we need to kill them faster. Which is why I'm trying to make good use of our electrocution here. Come on. We have completed it. Okay. All right, cool. That was actually pretty stressful. <laughs> Let's grab an energy orb here. Some ammo. Oh, we got a vitality from that. That's pretty nice. Nice little backup vitality. Honestly, after your first two vitality, though, you don't really need a third. So we could break that down for creds or endo, and it is time for us to move on to the next site. Now you'll notice because we are using our energy siphon that our energy does constantly go up. It's like one point per second. It's not a huge gain, but it is something, and that makes a big, big difference in the long run. 700 meters to the next destination. This is why we need to do this mission. We need a transportation method other than just running around on our feet. Uh, admittedly, the one we're getting here is not the best transportation method ever. But it is something, and I'm working on a little surprise for you guys that should allow you to get the best transportation method pretty quickly here. Uh, it is going to take me a minute to finish that, but I, I promise that it'll be worth when I get it done. Oh, come on. Let's see. Can we make this jump? 
Let's find out, shall we? No. <laughs> the answer is no, we cannot make that jump. That's unfortunate because if we don't make that jump, then we have to take the long way around. Actually, this might work. Let's see if we can trick the game a little bit. Yeah, there we go. We'll just use this to cross. Uh, once again, this is why a transportation method is useful, especially with the water and things here. It makes it very, very difficult to get around. But it looks like we're just expected to return to Fortuna here. Oof. Uh, bad choices were made right there. I almost fell in the water just because of the way that I decided to go around that. So yeah, that's just an example then. We were 700 meters out from Fortuna when we finished that mission. Which means that we're likely to get that far out if we're just doing bounties out here. And that is the, the primary function of this open world is for us to be able to do bounties and fish and mine. Uh, as well as capture animals. There are some other things that go on here. There's currently an event going on here where you can gather Thermia, which is like these little canister things, and you can do it in a group. I highly recommend that if you're looking for something to do right now, the Thermia event is huge for new players because the top end reward from it is a weapon called the Opticor Vandal that is excellent. The Opticor Vandal is excellent, and if you earn it through this event, you actually get a free weapon slot for it as well, which makes it even better. Now, you may have to have this mission done in order to get access to it, but that's what we're about to find out. Let's see. Hello there, Thursby. We have done the things that you have requested. Alright. Right on. Alrighty. Okay. Time to go meet Biz. Alrighty, this is the Biz. I love the theme music for Fortuna. Alrighty. <laughs> I am puzzled always about the preservation of life, more the strategic deletion of it. Conservation may be my calling now. The scale will still require an occasional adjustment. Head to the Vallis if you want to work. So now we're going to go do some work for the biz. Uh, I love that. <laughs> more the strategic deletion of life. Tell me more. Tell me more. So we're going to head out to Orvelis now to try to finish this mission off. Uh, these types of story missions can take a minute. I do want to get through the whole thing, though, because completing this is going to be very, very important for your capability to move into other content in the game. Uh, in particular, Cetus. Oh. We're gonna be planting a K-bomb. Woot! Uh-oh. Yeah, Utico's done doing things the way that uh, Thursby and Biz want to do them. Utico is a smooth operator. Okay. Let's go. Alrighty. Gonna try to jet my way over there. I am gonna have to use my speed boost to get there in a reasonable amount of time. As you can see, just from the, the travel time we're spending going to these missions, it is incredibly important that we get a method of transportation to make these at all efficient, because this travel time is insane right now. And once again, it's worth remembering that our travel time is being reduced by the fact that we're Volt and we have our speed boost. Alright, that guy's done. This was not a good decision. Okay. So what we're trying to do is get into that building. In order to do so, 
It's kind of like a spy mission. We can't go the direct route. We saw there were lasers in front of the doorway. Ow. That was not very nice. Oh boy. The alarm has been triggered. I'm just going to go ahead and auto-res myself here. No big deal. And I'm going to stop fighting and just go straight for the objective. There we go. Very much like a spy mission here. Okay. Hack is complete. And with that, so is this part of the quest. Okay. Move, 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 move. I want to get out of there. There's just way too many enemies. They will shred us. We do not have the ability to face them all at once. Normally, you'll be doing these missions in a group, which makes them much more tenable, but for this particular part of the quest, it is solo, so we've kind of got to be smart and not really over-engage. All right. Next. There we go. Speed boost away. Of course, you'll see some people using Excal, and they'll just pull out the Exalted Blade and wreck all those enemies, and that's great and fine, but... A, f a short time from now, that Excal is going on the shelf and probably will not get broken out for very much. Uh, Volt, once again, on the other hand, will be very, very useful, especially once we get to the Plains of Cetus and a little bit further in the main quest, Volt will become exceptionally useful. Right now, he's already useful, though. I mean, this speed boost is making this much, much more tenable. Uh, and here, we just need to find the agents that have been killed. So there's one. Yep, we need more info, so we gotta find more dead, more dead Solari. Here we go. There's a second. There should be a third right over there. Just basically looking for color on the, the white snow. That's gonna see. We can see the next one right there. I bet that dark spot right there is a Vox Solaris. Yes, or a Solaris rather. Okay. Now, when you do these for bounties, there will be a bonus on them if you do it within a certain time limit. So you do want to work efficiently and kind of knock it all out as quickly as possible. Okay, we got to go rescue Biz's team. Uh, that's going to mean holding this point. Alright. <laughs> Yay, Utico's done being nice. I mean, it's easy for her, because she's sitting safely back in Fortuna, and we're the ones out here on the front line. But, yeah. Alright, gonna take this Lynx turret out. You'll note that I'm firing through our wall to get that extra damage right there. This is where we really, really shine as Volt in combat, is by using that wall. Okay, we're gonna loop these around real quick. Bam. Now we've completed the hack, or rather we've started the hack. You can see the progress up in the upper left corner here. And literally all I'm gonna do is stand right here, wait for enemies to spawn, put my shield down and be like, come on, bring the, bring the enemies. We got this. and get the advantage of our shield damage here. If I really wanted to do it, I could do this as well. We can put up two shields and fire through both. You're going to talk about a lot of extra damage. This should just melt things. Provided they both stay up long enough for the enemy to actually get here and us to shoot at him. Come on. Uh, the first one went down, and we do not have the energy to put it back up. So yeah, you can stack your shields here for even more damage. Uh, you will gain a damage bonus for each shield that you fire through, not just the first. Um, and it looks like we have enemies spawning inside of the area, so we're going to go ahead and put a shield up. Take them out. This is one of the unfortunate things about these types of missions, is that it can spawn enemies inside here, which is really weird. Uh, and it's going to be difficult to sort of get this guy through. Nope, there we go. Through our wall pretty easily there. Gonna get some extra energy out of there, and then drop another wall. And with the drones, I'm honestly just gonna hit them with lightning, because why not? Why not? Uh, in the normal missions for this, there will be a bonus for killing certain enemies and picking up data keys, which can then be used. There we go, we're gonna move that wall up a little bit. Really? Why do you do this game? Why do you keep spawning enemies behind me? Alright, he's dead now. Can't get in there to get that ammo, which is actually going to be problematic for us here in a moment, because we are down to our secondary weapon. 
Oh wait, weird. It's oh, it swapped us to our secondary because we picked up the wall. I thought it swapped us because we were out of ammo. So now we're just kind of waiting. Just take that guy down without a wall so we don't have to waste the energy on it. Conserving energy here a little bit just so that if they do drop some heavier units, we can throw the wall up and be safe. All right, seeming good so far. I mean, with those guys, we can honestly just use one of our ones to take them out. Just gonna hang out here. And Taxon died somewhere along the way and I didn't even notice, guys. Uh, so that's unfortunate. That means we have no more vacuum, so we do want to run around and make sure that we're scooping up loot. We've got a health orb just kind of sitting here waiting too, though. It looks like they dropped some enemies that got stuck on the other side of those mountains. I'm not going to complain about that. I will take it. We're almost done with this hack right now. Come on. City, city. Yeah, our wall has been super, super useful for this. And when this opens, we will be able to get in there and take this stuff. So I'm actually going to pop those so that we can go grab that stuff once this opens. Looks like no more enemies. I gotta believe they got stuck or something. Yeah, they're stuck over there. All right, good job. I will take it. Make my life a little bit easier. Come on, there we go. Oh, look, Nef Anyo isn't happy. Wow, we got a ton of materials out of that one. Uh-oh. Now he knows about Thursby. Nef is threatening Thursby. Roger, roger. So now we need to go back to Fortuna. Hello, Rachni. You're a pain. I want to kill you because you sometimes have goodies. Ooh, like that organ chatter is a nice little pickup there. Oh, no. They're taking Thursby. They're taking Thursby. Okay, so Neff has taken Thursby now. And now we have a serious problem because Utico is not going to stand for that. Had enough of the Corpus taking her people. Uh, let's get past here real quick and try to zoom back to town. Once again, another 400 meters to travel because we don't have good transportation. It's still not like that much better with the transport we're getting from here, but there is some transportation we'll get later on that will be even better. And I, like I said, I'm working on something special to make that easier for you guys. So if you are somebody that watches this Beginner's Guide series, it should be a lot easier for you to sort of solve your transportation issues than maybe somebody who does not. Uh, and honestly, I'm working on a lot of things for, for those of you that happen to use the guides. Um, and I'm, I'm kind of excited about them, but I don't want to spoil anything until things are set up. But I'm looking at doing things like uh, newbie mod packs where you get like all the base mods that you kind of need to get started just given to you by people that have extras. Uh, some fun, fun programs for our new players. And that's if you want to partake in them. I honestly totally understand if you'd rather earn those things yourself, and I can respect that, but if not, we can make... <clears throat> I can make things a little bit easier on you there. Sorry, my throat is really messed up this morning. Okay. It's all this quarantine, guys. It's not doing me any good. It's also the coffee. I drink a lot of coffee with creamer in it, and creamer causes me to be a little bit more congested, I think. But it's either be asleep or be slightly congested. Oh, we gotta talk to Utico. I thought she'd be sitting there, but she's not. Uh-oh. Oh, no. Oh, they... The medic's not sure if they can Wow. So much missing. This was a mistake letting you get involved. Why did I listen to this? Maybe oh, it's no. not too late to impress Neff before his big unveiling. Appeal to his mercy. Show him what we can do. Get topside. I'll fill you in. Okay. This seems like a bad idea. So they basically cut Thursby into pieces, and now we're going to go try to impress the guy who did that. Seems bad. Seems very bad. While we're at it, I guess we'll check that when we get back. Okay. Bring it back, and maybe we stop the entire Vanus from being bathed in slag. Now she's worried that Neff is just going to annihilate all of the Solaris. So we've got to go do a thing to try to keep Neff happy. Good old Neff. Good old friendly happy Neff. 
understand. Nothing you do will make them kind. The more yeah. you give, the more he'll take. When you yep. Out, people get hurt. But if we let that divide us, it will only get worse. I agree with the biz. I agree with the biz. We need to take it to Neff. Oh, you hear that? We need Vox. Let's see what Vox is, guys. I, I hope you're excited, because I love... This whole, like, area is one of my favorites in the game. The story here is great. Honestly, this is one of the things that really, really sold me on the game as a whole. Okay, so right now we need to protect this excavator, and in order for it to do its job, we have to provide it with power cells that are dropped from specific enemies who we can see carrying them. So these guys with the power cells on their back, they are the targets for us right now. Like him. Okay, let's get this in here. Uh, while we're at it, we do need to defend it. However, this is a little bit different from regular defense missions because if we just keep a constant enough flow of power cells, that will actually power the shields of the excavator and keep it from being destroyed. Now, we do want to make sure that we're not focusing too much on enemies that do not have power cells over enemies that do. The only reason we kill enemies that do not have power cells here is so that we can defend the excavator, but we would much rather be taking out enemies that do have power cells so that we can keep the shields regenerating on it and actively defend it. Like this guy. Hello there. You both have power cells, which means you can both die right now. You can see the excavator is down to zero. Oh, that was nasty. That was just nasty. We stabbed him in the uh, dangly bits there. We use our shock here to kind of distract those enemies, keep them from continuing to attack. And now the power is at full and you can see the shields are right back up there. I'm gonna go ahead and grab this one as well, just to make sure we have the extra power if we need it. And then we'll just sit here. Got 18 seconds before this finishes, but once that time has ticked off, we should be able to move on with our quest. All right, that guy's down. Power is still at full here. Shields are taking a little bit of damage. I'm gonna go ahead and put a power cell in here just to protect the shield some more. And it's done. Beautiful, let's get out of here. There is no reason for us to stick around. The odds are against us with them constantly dropping troops. Oh, melee prowess. I think we already had that, but always nice to pick up another mod. <laughs> oh boy. Uh oh. Uh oh. Neff is gonna test this coolant tower. Uh oh. Yeah. This is very bad. This is very bad. This is where the uh, Thermia Fractures event comes from. Neff is essentially trying to boot up this thermal device, and it's basically going to cause the planet to erupt in lava and kill everyone. Uh oh. Now we gotta go back to Fortuna. I like how it gave us a symbol further from Fortuna. And now we have to go back to Fortuna. Oh, here we go. Wow. Wow. So brain shelving, for clarification, is when they pull the brain out of a Solaris and they put it on a shelf, and the the widely held belief is that they use those brains to run the Corpus drones. So yeah, that's, that's terrible. They want to brain shelve 50 people because Neff decided to use that coolant tower 
when the Solaris already told him that it didn't work. So, yeah. This storyline is very, very dark post-apocalyptic corporation, which is probably why I like it so much, but it's about to get better, guys. It's, trust me, it's about to get better. We're about to, to get to the good part. Uh, so we may go a little bit over the normal amount of time. Like, I've been trying to do these in 30 minutes, but these guides honestly just take a little bit longer. So I'm just going to finish this out and we'll, we'll probably call it after that. But this is worthwhile. I hope you guys are enjoying it because I know I am. Uh, the Vox or the Solaris mission is my absolute favorite. And this is the Vox Solaris quest. So. Okay. It's not working. Yeah. Someone yeah. Do something. Do something. Listen, Utica is changing her tune, y'all. No more bowing. And never come back. Wouldn't blame you. This isn't a fight. Nah, nah. Sparky. Ness massing his troops outside our doors. And Time to go. The only thing standing between us and bloody oblivion. Time to go. Also, there's that other Tenno behind you that looks way better geared than me that could also stand. I'll help. Knew I could trust you. Take this. There's a present in there for the mucking taxman. Ooh. Why don't you deliver it to them? Sounds like fun. Okay, so this... Whoa. This might actually be the point where we get our transportation method. I hope it is, because that'll make things a lot quicker. Uh, I can't remember if it's after or right before the end of this quest. Buy him off? You've lost it. Wait. That ain't money. That ain't money. Biz's K bomb's missing. You're wasting my time. Who do you think you are? Oh, you're gonna find out, Neff. You're gonna find out exactly who we are. Detonate the K bomb. Bye bye. I mean, honestly. Boom! Goes the the vault. Oh. Yeah, you do. <laughs> uh oh. I hear something big. Oh my. I will find you. Uh okay. I have regrets. I have regrets. Look at that thing, y'all. I have major, major regrets. I don't know how we're supposed to defend the gate from this thing, but we're gonna try. I mean, right now, it's not really firing too much at us anyway. We can just kind of sit behind these rocks and stay safe. Okay. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Let me in. Let me in. I don't want none. I don't want none. Let me in. That thing's gonna tear me apart. Okay. We're out. <laughs> yeah, we don't want none of that right now. Oh, wow. All right, so he's just going to keep Profit Taker outside the city. Oh, how sweet. We all live together. Yes. We just pulled a Cooper Dawn, and if we don't show him who's in charge, we're lunch. Yep. Can I, can I come back into the town now, guys? Please? Thank you. All right, so Utica's right here. That'll continue this mission. Solaris United's just getting started. Neff won't want us messing with his investor showcase. He's planted that old mother out there to make sure we stay in here. Right. Now is the time to press for Lever. 
Head to the surface when you're ready. I've arranged to I think this is it. I think this is it, guys. I think this is our transportation. Yep. Fastest board in the balance. See if you can't slip right past that spider. <laughs> Alrighty. It's that time, folks. This is a K-Drive, also known as Utico Pro Skater. Do to do, we're just gonna grind our way past. Peace out, homie. <laughs> so now we have some transportation. Once again, this is not the best form of transportation in the game, but it is pretty fun. Oh, I missed that edge there. <laughs> there is an entire faction here on Solaris that will allow you to build your own K-Drives and upgrade them and make them as cool as you want them to be. Uh, you can also do tricks on them. Like front flips. I have not used my K-Drive in a long time. You can do a tail grab. You can spin. Backflips. All the things. Alright, so now we need to take Amorous to the coolant tower in order to prevent it from exploding. Here we go. Do to do. We are being shot at, I assume. Got that hack going. We'll leave our K drive there for a moment. And we are going to defend this tower. <laughs> and Vox Solaris is back, baby. Alright, where are you guys at? Uh-huh. Alrighty, where are they at? Here they come. So since we know where they're coming from, that makes this a lot easier because we can just go ahead and drop our shield and go to work. Oof. Hello. Goodbye. Uh, try to move through my wall here to get that little bit of extra damage. Although, honestly, in this case, we should probably just use our shock. Beautiful. Oh, yeah, their investment is super protected. This Tenno is just shredding their defensive units. So very well protected, guys. Although I did burn a lot of energy there, shocking everything in sight, so... Now we've got to be a little bit more careful. And they are coming in heavy with more units. Could be in a little bit of trouble here. Oh, I should have switched my melee weapon when we were back in town. That would have made things a lot better. But I did not... Thankfully, though, we did get a little bit of energy back there so that we could do some shocking to help with those drones. Gonna jump in and do our slammy slam here to make sure that these guys stay clear of that tower and to give us a little bit more chance to not die here because our shields are getting low as well. Where are they at? They're right here. Okay, you need to die. You need to die as well. Oh, boy. Slamming time. Yes. Just keep the slamming going. All the slamming. Uh, so that's going to buy us a little bit more time. We did talk about how you can use slams effectively to protect yourself if you get into trouble. And this is that in action. Shouldn't be required all of the time, but some of the time that's going to save you.
Oh, this guy is a pain. You do need to keep an eye on the tower. Oh, this is trouble. Okay. So, now we're getting real, real close here on this tower. Like, it's gonna die if I don't stop these guys quick. Okay, the shield is coming back up on the tower. Alrighty. 94%. We just gotta keep it alive for 6% more. But I think that it's actually done here, because they're just chit-chatting now. Yeah. Whew. That was close. That was a little tense. A little tense. Wouldn't have been that bad if I had brought a better melee weapon, to be honest. Uh, melee is very useful for when you have a lot of enemies and are getting overwhelmed, because you can kill multiple enemies at once without any additional energy cost. In this instance, though, I brought the wrong melee weapon, and it really cost us. All right, deliver the Amherst to the coolant tower. What? Oh, it's the next tower, okay. I was gonna say, what What are you talking about? <laughs> I hit the wall there, so it kind of was like, what? what do you want me to do? There we go. Back onto our K drive. Uh huh. This is great. <laughs> oh, poor Neff. Poor Neff. He didn't get to show the investors like he wanted to. There we go. Okay, can we come home now? There we go. Alright, so now we can head on back on our K-Drive, and we should have access to the K-Drive for the rest of the game. You will not be able to use this in normal missions, but in any open world zone, you can use your K-Drive. Uh, and there, like I said, there is a faction of characters here in Fortuna that will actually allow you to build your own K-Drives with custom parts. There's actually a mod system for the K-Drives. Uh, it's, it's quite nice. It's actually quite nice. If, you, if you're somebody who enjoys that kind of thing, there are a lot of people that, you know, maybe aren't super high on the K-Drive system, but I think it's fun. I mean, it reminds me of playing Tony Hawk's Pro Skater back in the day, so I'm all good with it. Plus, it is a great form of transportation just to get around. Woo, grinding up. Uh, and there is... Let's see, once we get inside, I'll show you guys where that faction is as well, so that you can... You can go talk to them if you're into the K-Drive thing. Okay, down to Fortuna we go. This should complete the Vox Solaris quest for us once we get down there, and that is us being done with the basic stuff for Fortuna. And I can show you guys the bounties real quick too, and then we'll call the episode there. Yep, so now we have the K-Drive launcher. It is important that you actually equip your K-Drive launcher if you want to be able to use it in open world zones. So you're going to want to go to Equipment, Arsenal, your Gear Wheel. And I recommend putting your K-Drive launcher, if not at the top, then very close to the top. So that you can get access to it almost immediately when you need it. Oh, there we go. It took a second for it to do that. I don't know what that was about. Uh, I'm also going to put our, si or, our Kinetic Siphon Traps and our Synthesis Scanners right there as well, so that we can utilize those quickly, because uh, we will need those for the Cephalon Samara stuff. Um, and we will take a look at the bounties real quick. So now that we have Solaris United unlocked, they do have rep. All of their vendors have stuff that you can get based on your rep. Uh, and then they have a bounty system here. Now there are five different tiers of bounties. They range in levels from five to 15 to 40 to 60. If you right click them, you can see the rewards that are available from them. So if we were to get this 100 plastids right here from doing this, this would actually help us build some of the things we've been unable to build so far. There's also a chance for us to get a Warframe chassis here, uh, some relics, and these debt bonds are things we need to rank up our rep with Solaris United. Now, this next one would give us access to nanospores, which is another thing that we needed, and that is in the, what, 10 to 30 range? So these two are the ones we would likely be running. You'll also notice that there are some unique mods available to this. These mods in Fortuna are not going to be super valuable to you, but there are some 
in another area that is open world called Cetus that are going to be exceptionally valuable. And we will talk about those ones on the next episode. Real quick, though, I am going to show you guys where the uh, K-Drive faction is located so that you can go talk to them if you'd like. See that? Just walk up to this little face and enter the clubhouse. Skill, bro. Every time. <laughs> I love these kids. They're awesome. So that I, I love these kids. They're awesome. So you can gain standing with them, and if you gain standing with them, you'll gain access to their different boards and things, which is very, very cool. Uh, and you can also come in here to assemble a K-Drive from the various parts you have. So yeah, tons and tons of fun stuff you can do with them. But that is for a future thing. That's going to be it for this one, folks. There is more stuff that I can't wait to cover on the next one, because now we can go do Cetus since we have the K-Drive. Uh, and there is another form of transportation, as I mentioned, that we also need to work towards, too. I hope this was helpful for you. If you have any questions or need any assistance with anything, go ahead and leave that in the comments. And feel free to add me in-game. That is real good, R-E-E-L-G-U-D. Or you can even add my main account if you'd like. That account is probably going to be more capable of helping you with stuff. That is R-E-A-L-G-U-D. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed the show. If you did, make sure to go ahead and give us a like or subscribe to the channel, and we will see you next time. Bye!